Hello YouTube, welcome to this part two of the character study. I'm actually deciding to change the name of these videos because I think that character study is much more relevant to what I'm doing here because the individuals that I'm uh, quote unquote analyzing are not really people, they're characters. And that has many different uh, meanings in a sense because they've built a character that they present to the world but they're also trapped within it. And that's what's so interesting. That's what I want to observe. So I need to say a few things before we jump in. First off, Nether Beast is back on YouTube. He has a new channel that is being uploaded almost every day. Anyone who uh, tries to post that new channel in the comment will be banned. Straight up. I'm not going to delete your comment. You will be banned. The reason why is I do not condone doxing. This character study is focused on Nether Beast, not the new persona that he's created for himself. And whatever he's doing on that channel has nothing to do with what he used to do. I'm focused on the guy who tried to give advice about bodybuilding because that's what I care about. Nowadays, he's doing MMA stuff, he's training. If another channel want to call him out for lies that he might be spreading on that new channel, all the more power to you. I'm not a fighter. That's not what I care about. So I'm not going to do that. And his new identity should remain separated from his old one. He changed names for a reason. The man has a family and I respect that. I also know that a lot of people who will potentially uh, become trolls or they're going to be nefarious towards him are going to be able to find the video they're going to be able to make the connection and i know that his channel is being kept sort of a secret so i don't want that on my page right so whoever you are post that channel you'll get banned forever that's the only time i actually ban people if you're trying to dox someone else i will uh, in this video and in the, uh, the other parts I'm going to be doing, I will refer to the new channel just because it just proves everything I said in part one. And if you haven't seen part one, go see it. It's important. There are timestamps. You don't have to sit through the whole thing. But we're going to jump right back in right now because I'm going to assume you saw part one. So I'm going to start with a video that was made as a response to my Nether Beast case profile fake natty false prophet as you can tell from the title of this video i'm keeping the religious theme alive if you're a christian and i offended you i apologize it, i just think it's a it's a good uh, iteration it's a good uh, metaphor filet so that video was called response to natural hypertrophy and uh, it was made by someone who still follows nether now i need to say right now that there are two types of people who are going to consume that type of videos. People who dislike Nether and people who like Nether. People who don't know who he is or was won't care. So it's not for the views, I don't care about views. The people who dislike him are going to just listen for the ments because it's fun. The people who like him are going to listen because they want to find a reason to keep liking him. I make that video for them, right? Because I know the People here for the men's are going to have a good time regardless. The people who are still emotionally attached to him, that's who I'm targeting. I'm trying to show you who that person is. I'm going to prove to you that that person is a liar. And I've had some people comment on the other video that they were very happy I did so because I helped them separate themselves from him. Because he did a lot of damage emotionally to a lot of people with his lies. And I want to make sure I keep doing that because I, I still know a ton of people on my channel who are subscribers, who still follow him, who still believe in his lies. And the person who made that response video is one of them. And there are other people on the channel. Disclaimer, I don't dislike you. I, I really want to free you. As preposterous as that may seem, I don't even think if, if that's a word, but I want to show you the truth. I want to show you what you clearly cannot see because I'm objective. So I'm going to keep showing you proofs and hopefully you end up realizing that you bought into a web of lies. So into the video, 
the first argument of the video was that I personally claim that Netherbeast never had, never had above 20 inches arms. The person claims that they watched one of my videos where I have 18 inches when they're pumped and they say that Nether's biceps were bigger. That shows a complete misunderstanding of bodybuilding, angles, cameras. Just because something looks big on camera doesn't mean it's big. As long as it's not measured, it's nothing. It doesn't exist, right? And I, I'm still yet to receive the video about him taping his arm. I'm convinced it does not exist. It's just a myth at this point. I've seen videos of him flexing. He never measured them. So DMT, if you're watching this video, where, where is the video about the arm taping? I'm still waiting. So this one is not uh, receivable. After that, there is a mention of the lifts not being proven to be fake. If you don't understand that those were fake, I don't know what to tell you. Even in the pin squat videos, I think you can see the shadow of the band on the wall. And also, if he had the ability to lift those weights, first off, why the strange angles? Like, look at the way I film. I, I'm in a tiny garage, right? He had a massive basement. He had all of the space in the world to take the camera back and film it. He didn't. Why? Because they were faked. He needed the angles to hide the bands. That's why when he was called out, he ran away. He, he could have... If you can lift something once, you can lift something twice. He's not a power lifter. He wasn't peaked for those lifts. He was supposed to be able to repeat them. So why didn't he? Because they were fake. And after that, the argument is that he published after that a pin squat clip that looked legit. I've seen that clip. Actually, I managed to put my uh, greasy paws on that clip. That pin squat and all of the, the pin squats I've ever seen that guy do, besides the fake clip with the reverse bends, it's like this range of motion. He basically locks his knees. That's not a pin squat. The, also, this is the reason why he had small legs. This is the reason why you shouldn't take advice from someone like this, because he doesn't know how to train. He shouldn't give bodybuilding advices. Three, they say that he never shrank down and looked like he didn't lift. And they say he lost size, but not everything, he got lean. He was below 15% body fat when he was big and juiced, juiced up. Now he just lost. Like he lost a clear 40 pounds of muscle. So again, that's coming from someone who doesn't understand body fat percentages. So that's not receivable. And apparently he changed his diet and that's why, yeah, no duh, you change your diet, you lose weight. But and I will express it later, it's funny how someone who clearly, or apparently, because that's what he said, it's not me saying that, who trained 20 years and apparently had a very tough time to build his arms, lots of portions of his body to bulk up, is now suddenly willing to let go of all of that. We have proof that he blew up in size because he wasn't that big in like 2015. He blew up in size in a very small amount of time and now he lost everything. I wonder what type of product does that, huh? Then they say that he had a small injury. Again, same logic as in the first video. If he had an injury, why does he present himself as some health guru with tendons of steel, as he used to say? He used to say that his tendons were as strong as great apes, but he has shoulder injury and he, he, lost, he loses 40 pounds, really? It just doesn't align. Open your eyes. He did say that his shoulders bothered him also, which is an indication that he didn't understand how to train. You're not supposed to have pains and aches all the time when you train, especially for hypertrophy. Four, he didn't claim to be the second coming of Jesus. Yes, I will give you that one. It's just me making fun. Uh, it's also, it also fits my narrative when it comes to the titles I use for these. So, okay, I'm wrong on this one. He helped people by giving out a ton of information for free. Yes, uh, in my opinion, that should be the baseline. Everyone should be doing that on YouTube Fitness. Knowledge should be free. So I'm not particularly liking him for doing that. He's just doing his duty, in my opinion. He was supposed to pass on knowledge and he knew that. He still knows that. And uh, that's the reason why I said that, in my opinion, selling the ebook was 
uh, a proof that the guy was in for the money. That's why I said that. He openly said that he had debts and kids, so why not get something back from those who can afford it? I also don't disagree with that. It's a free market. If you want to pay for something, go ahead. I'm just saying you cannot have everything. You cannot be the open guy who tries to help people and save the universe and at the same time make a profit, right? It's the reason why we hate fake natties. It's the reason why so many channels lost their followers because they eventually caved in and started making a profit, right? We don't like that. That's it. $99, you hear that? On top of that, they say that he put his wrong name in the Net a Better Upgrade manual. Why would he do that if he was just a scammer? I never said he was a scammer. I said he made a profit out of something. I also said that the ebook is stupid. I will expand on that. The reason why he put his wrong name in the Net a Better Upgrade is that how else is he supposed to receive money? Right? I mean, it's either that, because in a way, there are certain ways where you can receive money where your name is not going to be involved. You can use cryptocurrency and, and stuff like this. PayPal, but even PayPal nowadays really tries to make sure that you use your real name. So that's sort of the explanation. Also, I don't think he realized that people would be able to dig up his name, but now they have. And also reminder, please don't post his real name in the comments. After that, they defend the ebook. I explained in part one why the ebook is... Uh, is a waste of $50. I'm going to jump from part six, where they ask that they don't, they want to know where I, I saw the back knee that they claim. Go on YouTube, type dank net, net a beast, watch the video from uh, start to finish. At some point, there is a clip that I'm not able to find anymore on YouTube, most likely it was deleted. When you see Nether posting his uh, video of his back, you see some of, one of the worst cases of back knee I've ever seen in my life. So there it is, go check it out. And after that, they say that most of the people who didn't like him were haters. Yes, that's well, welcome to YouTube. Most people who hate people are haters, by definition. And it's true that many good people have haters where they don't deserve them. But there are a lot of haters who actually hold a tiny, tiny margin of truth. They're asking me uh, for the video about the pro hormones. I'm going to come clean right now, or rather come clean. I'm going to admit that I shouldn't have used that video of a pro hormone. Why? Because I saw it through a third party. I didn't manage to get the URL. I could never get a copy. The video was basically him reviewing the pro hormone and clearly stating he took it. All right, that's it. But it was a pro hormone. The video I cannot find. I tried really hard, I cannot find. So, I'm going to say it right now, I will not be using that video anymore to disclaim his natty status. They discussed the fact that he talked about a lot more than fitness and that he advocated for good, good things. Yes, but just because you advocate for good things doesn't mean that you shouldn't be touched. If someone gives 49 good advices and one that is potentially very dangerous or stupid, I'm going to call it out. That's just who I am. And it's also the reason why I didn't really mention all of the alien and like spiritual stuff. I don't care about that. That's not what I'm attacking. I'm not attacking him for being a weirdo. I'm a weirdo too, but I'm a weirdo who's focused on bodybuilding. So I'm focused on the bodybuilding advice he used to give because he ran a bodybuilding channel. That's how he got all of his followers. They came from Alpha Destiny's channel. That's why they followed him, because he was big. And they say also that I made a video about him. People are still interested. Yeah, because he really managed to rope you guys in. You are emotionally attached to that guy because you see him as a guide. And uh, I quote here, I don't think everyone is dumb to fall for it. And I don't necessarily think that you're to blame. I just think he was sort of good at it. He's good at what he does. And I'm going to just be, not be completely arrogant about it. I'm very good at reading people. I'm, it's something I've done all my, all my life. I'm able to tell when someone is dishonest. And also I have the mind to dissect certain objective portions of a person's dialect, 
some of the things they say that jump to me because it, to me it's it's obvious when someone lies it's obvious to me but i'm glad i made the video because it it some people came out of the woodwork to discuss it and also if never watches this video because now he's back on youtube so if you want to make a response video please do don't i i know now that you're of the products so you're not going to rage if you want a constructive discussion with me watch my part one it's time stamped and answer every single point if you want a discussion right because apparently you have a lot of fans who would want to hear more i think that you owe them the truth if someone questions things and uses objective facts you should be able to use objective facts to disprove them and this we're going to a point where they say that a lot of people discovered new things and advocated that uh, and, and basically got new knowledge from him. Yes, but you shouldn't uh, idolize someone for doing that. They opened a door for you. Are you going to prostrate yourself for 1500 years because they opened that door? It's something you would have found out by yourself. It's the same on this channel. I appreciate when you guys say thank you. It's great. You're being polite. I, I love it but you don't have to if you want to just click on the video watch it and then apply it and never say thank you never leave a like do it i'm not here to be given flowers i'm here to shred shred uh, sh share my knowledge that's it i hate that mentality of being uh being like indebted to someone because they taught you something it's they taught you that thing because they're older than you. That's it. So many channels ride on that. Oh, they, they had the program and novices made good gains. Novices would have made good gains doing push-ups and throwing rocks in the mountains. It's, it doesn't, the world doesn't work like that. Stop enslaving yourself, please. Bunch of things that follow that I want to cover afterwards outside of the response video. But basically what made him so appealing, and I'm going to discuss it in detail, the reason why some of the things he said were appealing. Then they talk about his fighting. I will cover that also because I've discovered some interesting things regarding his experience as a cage fighter. But then by saying he clearly was special and not desperately wished to be as you claim. Oof, did you date the guy? Why are you so emotionally attached to him? It's, it's insane. If you follow him for his bodybuilding advice, he lost all of the muscle. So why follow him, right? And as far as the spiritual stuff, you should have gotten from what he said that it's all out there. All of the knowledge he spread is out there. You could have discovered, your, discovered it yourself. But because he's the one who popped your cherry and made you believe these things, suddenly he's your new god. Uh, after that, a bunch of things about his temper. That he, it was misplaced sometimes, that he apologized for it. My issue is the weird just, just juxtaposition, English is hard, between the Zen mindset and the weird burst of anger that I personally find uh, pathology. That's it. Maybe it's just me. I'm, I just, I'm just calm most of the time. That's it. And also, it's a side effect of steroids. So, you know, sort of a dead giveaway. I don't, and also, I don't think it's being real. Being uh, antagonistic and uh, corrosive with your viewers is not being real. You can, you can still, you know, teach people and, and put people in their place, quote unquote, and still be civil about it. After that, they say it was justified, his anger, because people would flood the Q&As and, and repeat the same questions over and over. Yeah, that was sort of his job to read the Q&As and get rid of the doublon. That's sort of what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to jump into the Q&A and know nothing and then repeat the same questions 15 times. And as they say here, he happily repeated the questions about supplements. His Q&As are so hard to watch because of that. The same questions about that herb or that tonic repeat themselves 
forever. And he answers with the same answers because of course, but it's because he gets to plug his ebook every single time. So of course he does it. And then 10 and 10 is interesting. And that's going, I think it's the last point. No, it isn't 11. Uh, but after that, I'm going to jump into my own, uh, my own points. But I really need to answer because when someone ma ma makes a response video to me, I want to actually respond, right? It's what YouTube is made for. They say, you accuse him of spamming his stuff in the comments of other channels, but you do the same. And at least they, they recognize that I do it indirectly by being on every fitness video. All right, that's either being immensely intellectually dishonest or being too stupid to understand the difference. I hope that you're number one and not number two. The difference is night and day. I comment on other channels. I never mention that I have a channel. I never ask people to subscribe ever. I just post a comment, right? The reason why people notice me is because my comments get traction. Why? Because they're funny, they're interesting, I'm good at creative writing, I'm fast, I'm a fast typer, that's it. You know how many people do that? You know how many thousands, tens of thousands of channels try to do that and they fail? You've noticed me doing that because I'm good at it. That's it. There's a difference between doing that and literally linking your channel. It's what he used to do. I saw the screenshots. He used to come on channels, post five comments saying, hey, here's my channel, watch it, and just spam, 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 spam. You cannot compare that to what I'm doing. I'm doing creation. He's a spammer. It's not the same, you know? And also think about that because I've had people, I know the type of people who say that is because they want to find a reason to dislike me and because I get attention, they crave that attention, which is sad. Why would you crave attention on the internet? You should have a purpose behind it, like creating a channel. They project their insecurity onto me and they say, oh, why do you comment so much? You know exactly why I comment so much. It's for exposure. But you wish you would be, you were able to do that, but you, you're not because you're not funny, right? But the, the flip side of that is also that I've never been banned from commenting. You know, he has maybe think why the reason why is because people, the creators of content actually like my comments. I may, I create traction. I create engagement on their page. He didn't. When you spam your channel, you create nothing. You just get a click here and there from people. I get maybe, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of likes on my comments. I don't get hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I don't get hundreds of thousands of clicks on my videos. You know why? Because there's like 1% of people who actually click on my channel name because I'm not trying to advertise directly. It's indirect. So I'm going to end it here. But yes, he was annoying people spamming his channel. It's not the same. And also the fact that Steve Shaw had to step in to tell him to stop is sort of sad. Like you, you should know not to do that. I, I really dislike when someone posts a comment and they're like, oh, please subscribe to my channel. Try and be funny and attract people instead of begging. And then they say that there's a 11 year old video of him where he's interviewed about MMA and he says that he comes from a background of lots of weights. And they say it's an evidence that they, he has many years of experience, which would justify his body and strength. Uh, the issue is that I don't care how many years you've lifted. What I care is what your body looks like. I've seen interviews of him in 2015. He wasn't big. That's my issue. He blew up in size. You can train for 10 years. If you get no result and then suddenly you do get massive results, either you were really bad at training or you did a little something. And when I, when I base that idea and theory around what he used to say, or he used to say, oh, uh, I couldn't recover and uh, I couldn't make gains. That to me sounds like someone who didn't know how to build work capacity and didn't understand intensity and volume. And then eventually jumped on PEDs that give you those things and made massive gains, but then eventually had to jump off. This is why I spoke about that. This is why I'm talking about how many years he spent lifting. It's suspicious. 
And they finish by saying, you're not that far off him yourself in terms of physique, which I would disagree with. Because when he was on TD, he was actually bigger than me in many aspects. Why not believe he is natural for the reasons I exposed in part one? And those reasons don't apply to me. That's the reason why. All of the things I speak about in the How to Spot a Fake Natty, apply them to me, right? I give them to you so that you can spot fake natties. Apply them to me. And if you can make them match, make them match. And that's it. So that was from Mystical Beasts. Uh, if you can somehow post on the channel, I know you were banned from the channel. That's YouTube doing this stuff. I'm sorry about that. I don't like people not being able to post comments. I want you to be able to post whether or not you like me. And if you agree with me, it doesn't change the fact that you should have freedom of speech. Uh, so maybe you're unbanned. If you're not unbanned, send someone else like you did last time um, to link the video if you want to make another response, because I think I covered your points fairly uh, uh, deeply in depth, blah, blah, blah. That's it for that. Now I'm going to get into my points, which are, which are going to be more interesting in my opinion, because I'm going to keep giving reasons why you shouldn't have taken advice from that guy and why he was a fake. One, he had overdeveloped traps, upper back, shoulders, neck when he had his channel. These are areas of the body that respond extremely well to PEDs, but also that lose a ton of size when you get off of PEDs. And surprise, surprise, on his new, on his new channel, he's lost all of that. Like all of that yoke is gone. So I ask you this, would a man who was able to build all of that naturally lose it? Even if you take into account the fact that he did a weight cut. Weight cuts happen. I get that. Weight cuts don't zap all of your muscularity away. It just doesn't work like that. You're going to lose a lot of size, but it won't just disappear. Look at his neck now. He has a pencil neck, right? If you somehow have his channel. For me, that's a dead giveaway that something in his hormonal profile happened. There was a massive change that created a massive change in body type. And also, even though the lifting style he used to promote, so rack pulls above the knee, the heavy shrugs, etc., could be responsible for the size, the fact that he lost it all, in my opinion, is an indication that his methods were not as effective as he claimed. That's also my issue. He showed himself doing a lot of lifts, doing a lot of partials, and he said that his muscular physique came from that. I say bogus. I think that that came from drugs. And I also say that because uh, there is a video that is available on his channel. So again, good luck to you. Try to find it. That is him at a fairly high body weight, I would say 230, and he had a completely different physique. That's when he was still fighting. He didn't have that yoke. He still had his white shoulder set because that's bone structure. He didn't have that yoke. So for me, the non-existence of that before and the absence of that after is suspicious, right? Especially because even though the neck does shrink a ton with time, I find that the traps maintained fairly well so that if even though it's not a direct proof it's still suspicious oh that number two is spicy <laughs> well i mean i'm i'm just going to jump in but i found a video of him claiming that uh, jesus christ is a personal friend of his and that he's able to communicate with him directly What else can I say? How many people on this planet who have delusions of grandeur, who have personality disorders, who are scam artists, are going to say that Jesus is their best friend? How many best friends does Jesus have? How much time does he have on his hands to take out all these bumps? Seriously, come up with something more interesting. Find a different uh, character to be linked to why do they always speak Jesus? It's always Jesus. So yeah, there's a 20 minute video of him saying that uh, he, he's known Jesus for a long time and uh, that's why he doesn't, he doesn't resonate with what Jesus is in the Bible because he's known him personally. 
I've known Jesus too. He uh, he was Portuguese. He was very good at soccer. That's self-explanatory. I can't say much more about that. I mean, if that doesn't tell you that the guy has a problem, he sold long-distance energy readings based on first names. Another pal, 30 bucks. You're going to pay 30 bucks for a guy who to read your name, like George, and he's going to make an, what he calls an, a long-distance energy reading. Really? Did you really do that? If you're one of those people who try to defend him, I hope you never paid for that because, wow, if you do, you're the type of person who gets scammed by supplements in the fitness industry. You're the reason why that still exists is because there's always someone stupid enough to buy it. And, and again, I'm sorry. I really feel for you. I'm trying to help you detach yourself emotionally from him. So I'm trying to get a raise out of you. I'm going to try to make you realize how ridiculous this entire thing was. Based on first names, how does he know? How many, if your name is Muhammad, there are millions of Muhammads. How does he know? How does he know it's your energy and not the other Muhammad? It makes no sense. He avoided certain religious topics like the plague, but he had an issue with Christianity. It's always interesting. It's, it's off topic, but I've always noticed that those atheists, those people who are skeptics about religion, they're always skeptical about Christianity. Like they all, they are only, their skepticism, which is a good thing to be skeptic, is only directed towards the religion in which they grew up in. Meaning that it, because so many people who have freedom of speech, so many people who are going to be able to open their mouth and speak on social media are from Western countries, which are all Christian. Christianity is the only religion that is openly questioned all the time. People make stand-up shows about it. It's fine to make fun of Jesus. You never hear that about other religions. And he was the same. He was very critical of Christianity, but if you ask him about any other religion, woo, he didn't want to mention that. To me, that's, uh, that's just, it just shows that he did not have the ability to project his understanding on a wide base. If you critique one religion, you should be able to critique all of them because they all have the same flaws. I'm going to stop there. He claimed, he, <laughs> sorry. This just comes out of me. He claimed he could have benched a thousand pounds raw if he wanted. A thousand pounds raw. The world record is being held by Julius Maddox, who is an absolute monster of a man. It's like 800 pounds around that. A thousand pounds raw. Again, if you know anything about lifting, you know that that's completely, it's completely outlandish. And even just for fun, why make claims like this? Because even if you believe in what he used to say, he used to claim 500 pounds, which is, it's sort of the, the benchmark for people who lie about their bench press. I used to bench five plates, bro. Someone who benches 500 pounds will not make the jump to a thousand. People who bench in the 600, 700, 500 was like, they got it. It was never a goal of theirs. They got it and then they moved on. It's like you when you bench 185. Did you remember your first 185? No, because it didn't register. Same for these guys. So a thousand pounds, of course. And he, on camera, he never benched more than 315. Like I'm talking a real bench not this range of motion in the Smith machine. And I'm going to get to that. He claimed to be able to run at 20 miles per hour through what he called muscular run. One, he never proved that. Two, what, what is muscular run? Like, especially for someone like him. He was all torso. He had no legs. He had no muscles in his legs. He had chicken legs. It's insane how many people, they want to be everything. They want to be big, they want to be fast, they want to be athletic, they want to be a good fighter. You can't do everything. There's a reason why people specialize in stuff. You can only be good in certain areas. You cannot be a jack of all trades. But those people always try to claim that they can. 
I have the plasticity of a gymnast and the strength of an heavyweight boxer. No, you don't. And you never proved it, so it doesn't exist, right? Picks or it didn't happen. Claims, he claimed that his punches were so strong that they would lift his body off the ground with each blow. And then I wrote in parentheses, watch out Francis Ngannou. Why did I write this? Because even Tyson, even Ngannou, even the heaviest punchers in the world don't do that. The only way that could be true is if you really have no upper body and you don't know how to throw a punch. Because when you throw a punch, you're supposed to use the kinetic energy from the ground, transmit it in the body, in the blow, and direct it to the opponent. If you jump as you do that, either you're doing a gas or jump, this is not ajime no hippo, calm down, or you don't know how to punch, you're wasting energy. And also, anyone who knows fight knows that when you're off the ground, you're toast because you can't move anymore. You're going to get rocked and you won't be able to sidestep it. He constantly flip-flops between being a bodybuilder and being an, a strength athlete. That is a dead giveaway for poor inferences in the fitness realm. Watch out for people who do that. Watch out for people who one week, one week dealt this, one week dealt that, and I'm an expert at everything. No one is. The reason why YouTube channels do that, where they do bodybuilding, strongman, powerlifting, gymnastic, is because they want more views. They want to expand their lane so that they get more traffic, right? Most of them, they stay, they, they are an honest, honest enough to admit that they're just passerbys in these words and they, they don't really claim an expertise. But people like Nether, people who have a God complex, who have that need to impress others, don't. They claim to be good at everything. Look at Bloho. Bloho does the exact same thing. So Nether was, sometimes in his videos, he's like, oh, I'm doing that for aesthetic. Sometimes you, he was a strength athlete. First off, if you're a strength athlete, you cannot just do partials. You have to do real lifts, right? And also, in my opinion, a strength athlete is someone who is going to be excited about showing off his strength. They're going to be excited about showing a full range of motion squat because it's what they do. It's the reason why when I post a video of me flexing, I'm happy. I'm sharing with you what I like. It's courting the body. Clearly, that's what he liked too, because that's what he focused on. It's the aesthetic. Because, but the issue I have is that his methods to get to those aesthetics were not what led, it, led him there. In my opinion, it was drugs. That's my issue. <laughs> I like this one. He was really insistent on denouncing what he called the rat race of everyday life. You will see that a ton. People who say, oh, nine to fives are for slaves and... I don't want to work, I don't want to pay taxes, I would much rather do something else. People, unemployed people who make fun of people who work and say, oh, you're paying for me. He was sort of like that in a sense, meaning that he would criticize getting a college degree, he would criticize getting a regular job. Most people who do that cope. They do that because they realize they're not part of productive society and it makes them feel terrible thems about themselves so they have to find a reason to explain why they're not doing that. Sometimes it's, oh, I'm a free spirit. I don't want, I'm not a drone. It's all excuses. It's all excuses. If, you're, if you want to be part of this human experience, you have to pull your weight. As a man, it's also going to make you feel much better. This is why a lot of people who don't do that are neurotic. They're not happy with themselves. Do something. He was also a big fan of naps and resting, aka not, not working. Uh, this is just my opinion. I personally was raised like this. Naps were not allowed in my house. You slept during the night. And it was a big cultural shock for me to go to the US because people take naps all the time. Like college students would nap all the time and I didn't understand that. Uh, but I'm just, uh, I'm, uh, how would I say that? I am uh, prejudiced towards naps. But it was funny on his channel because he, he also tried to intellectualize the concept of naps, uh, which is like, again, it's a cope. If you want to nap, nap, but don't pretend like you're, it's opening your third chakra. You're just napping. It's nothing special. And I'm going to finish on this. I'm, 
I was telling myself, oh, I, I will be done with this uh, character study of Nether Beast in, two in three videos. It's going to take at least five. So I'm suspecting that the one about uh, Cove Bloho, aka the fake Merc, might be a 10 part series. And if you're waiting for this uh, impatiently, don't worry, it's coming in August. I promise you. So we're going to finish with this one where Nether promoted the use of a Smith machine for one reason. Not because it's better, not because it's, a, it's an underutilized piece of equipment. He did that because it allowed him to push the weight at an angle that made him stronger. Smith machines are easier, right? I'm not even going to argue that, right? Smith machines that go up and down are already easier. Smith machines that go at an angle are much easier because what is harder? Pressing a barbell, laying on your back like this, or being vertical and pressing a barbell that is hanging from ropes like this. Hmm. Second option, you're going to push three times more weight. Why? There's less resistance because you're not pushing against gravity anymore. That's what he used to do. Please, if you thought he was strong, look at the way he would do presses. It was always at an angle. It was never horizontal presses and it was always a small range of motion. That was not a demonstration of strength. It was an illusion. That's why people called him out for him, for it. That's why people call people out for partials. If you do partials for bodybuilding, fine, because the end goal is just bigger muscles. If you do them to demonstrate strength, then you're out of luck because they don't demonstrate strength because it's too easy to skew them and people are not able to put two and two together. It's insane that I have to show that to people. I've had some of his fans send me clips of him pushing five plates like this. And I was like, you realize that that's nothing. I can do that. It's not a bench press. It's not the same thing. So I'm going to end here. I don't want this one to be too long either. Thank you for watching. This will be time stamped so that you don't have to see through the whole thing. Nether, if you want to make a response to that, if you want to challenge me to a fight that I will not go to, feel free, uh, and I will see you next time. Jesus fucking Christ.